Hello everyone. In this video, I'll explain and demonstrate the different options available in Tower for modeling and designing redundant members. In a lattice tower, redundants are members which theoretically do not carry load but are used to brace load carrying members to increase their compression capacity. In reality, redundants do carry some load but they are typically very small. It is not required to include redundant members in your tower models but including redundants in the models provides several advantages. It allows for automated design checks of the redundants based on a selected design code. It allows for optimum sizing of redundants based on actual loads or as a percentage of a load in the member that it is bracing. It provides a more accurate automated calculation of the tower weight and wind area because you are entering all of the members into the model and it provides the ability to check redundant members for climbing loads from personnel standing at the middle of the member. In addition, there have been several significant advancements in Tower over the years to make the program more redundant friendly. Beginning with version 15.50 of Tower, the crossing and corner diagonal design check routines will work when redundants are connected to the diagonals. This was not possible in prior versions, and it was a common reason users cited for excluding redundants from their models. However, this is not the case anymore. Secondly, Tower has the capability to include or ex exclude the redundants from the finite element analysis. Excluding the modeled redundants from the finite element analysis greatly speeds up the analysis for models with lots of redundants, but still allows you to use the automated redundant design features in Tower. Excluding redundance from the analysis may also allow some models to converge to a solution which otherwise would not have converged when the result redundants were included. So due to these improvements in Tower and the many advantages gained by including redundance in the models, we recommend that you include redundant members in your Tower models. To demonstrate how redundants work in the Tower program, I'm going to work with this BLE example Tower model which ships with the software. In Tower, redundant members are defined in the Angle Groups table by selecting either Redundant or Redundant AI from the pull-down list. Groups defined as Redundant AI will always be included in the finite element analysis, even when you elect to exclude redundants from the FE analysis, whereas the standard redundant members will be included or excluded from the finite element analysis at your discretion. That is all you need to do to define your redundant members. Then you can easily view the redundant members in your models in the geometry or deform geometry view by opening the 3D control dialog box and selecting the color by group type. Once you've done that, click apply or OK and the redundance will be shown in orange on the screen. Now in Tower, there are three redundant design check methods you can choose from, and these are found in the Redundance tab of the General Data dialog box. If you use the percent force or percent capacity of the leg options, then you will need to select which design code you want to apply in this pull-down menu. Now in this area, you can select whether you want any failures of the redundance to be shown as violations or whether you want them only shown as warnings in the output reports in Tower. And lastly, there is an option to include or exclude the redundance from the finite element model. But keep in mind that any angle group you defined previously as redundant AI in the angle groups table will always be included in the FE analysis regardless of your selection here. Now I'm going to run an analysis to design the redundance using the percent of compression force method per the ASCE 10 code, and I'll run the analysis twice. First with the redundance included in the FE analysis, and a second time with the redundance excluded from the FE analysis, so we can compare the results. Now I'm also going to change this redundant group angle group to redundant AI, so we can see how those are treated compared to the standard redundant members in the output reports. And lastly, since this is a family manager model, I'm going to limit the analysis to just the active model, which will speed up the analysis for this demonstration. 
So now I'll go ahead and run the analysis. Now while this analysis is running, notice the amount of time it takes for this tower model to complete the analysis when I selected the option to include the redundance in the finite element analysis. Having the additional members and the additional joints needed to connect those redundant members to the model increases the analysis time. So in this case, the analysis takes about 25 seconds to complete. Now I'll go back and modify the setting to exclude the redundance from the FE analysis and I'll rerun the analysis. Now here you can immediately see how much faster that analysis was completed with the redundance excluded. And that was about three seconds, which is about eight times faster than the previous analysis. Now that the analyses have been completed, I'm displaying the deformed geometry side by side. On the left is the first analysis with the redundance included and you can clearly see the redundance in orange in the deformed geometry. On the right, you can see the deformed geometry when the redundants were excluded from the FE analysis. Now notice the only redundants in the analysis are these four vertical redundants, and that is because they were defined as group type redundant AI, so they will always be included in the analysis. So simply viewing the deformed geometry can provide you with a graphical confirmation whether the redundants were included or excluded from the FE analysis. But be aware that you will see some differences in the forces in the other members, the non-redundant members, between the two analyses, especially in the areas of the structure where there are many redundants. The reason for this is that the redundants will carry forces when they are included in the analysis, but they obviously cannot carry any forces when they were excluded since they were removed prior to the analysis. And the overall stiffness of the structure is different in the two analyses, which also affects the force distribution. Now, that's not to say that one analysis method is right or wrong. They are just different because they are based on different structural models in the FE analysis. Now let's go to the analysis results report and review the redundant members check section of the report. Now this section will only appear when you select either the percent of compression force or percent of compression capacity design option in the general data dialog box. It does not appear if you select the actual force design option. This section of the report will list each redundant member in the model along with the design load for the redundant and the percent usage. You will also see columns which list the design basis, which is the load in the braced member and the percentage of this load the redundant must support based on the design code you selected. In this example, you can see that the design basis for most redundants is somewhere between 1.5 to 2.5% because I selected the ASCE 10 code for the redundant design check. However, you'll also note that there are instances where the design basis is 100% of the braced member load. So let me give you an overview of how the redundant design procedure works in Tower using the following example. For each redundant, Tower calculates the force in the member, which I'll call F, using the maximum load from each member which connects to the same end joint as the redundant and are in the same plane as the redundant. Redundants are considered to brace a member whenever there is a collinear pair of members at a joint. Collinear meaning whenever two members are connected in a straight line. In this example, members 1 and 2 are collinear and are braced by redundants R1 and R2. Redundants will also be designed considering the forces from any other members which connect to the end joints but are not collinear braced members. So in this situation, redundant member R1 will be designed based on the forces at the left end from members 1 2 and R2, and the forces at the right end from members 3 and 4. So to, to design redundant R1, Tower first finds the maximum compressive load in the braced member number 1 and determines what percent of the load to apply to the redundant system based on the redundant design code that you selected. In this case, that is the 1.5 to 2.5% value that was seen in the report 
because I selected the ASCE 10 code for the redundant check. Then, Tower applies that calculated load, which I'll call P, perpendicular to the member and into the members of the redundant system, which in this case consists of two redundants, R1 and R2. Now that load, P, is distributed to the redundant system based on the relative stiffness of each redundant and their geometric orientations. And from this, TAR will calculate the force in the redundants, which again I'll call F. Next, TAR repeats these steps using the maximum compression load of the other collinear member, member number two, to determine a new value of P to apply to the redundant system. Then, Tower determines the force in the redundant R2, but this time applies 100% of this force to the redundant system and calculates the proportion which is carried by redundant R1. Now, the reason Tower uses 100% of the force from R2 is because member R1 does not actually brace member R2 along its length, but merely connects at a common joint. So the design code criteria does not apply in this situation. This is why you will sometimes see values for the percent braced member load of 100% in the report. Then, this process is repeated at the other end of the redundant member R1. So for this example, redundant R1 will be checked based on the loads from five different members. Members 1, 2, 3, 4, and R2. So hopefully this simple example illustrates the process used by Tower to design redundant members. Now, going back to the redundant members check table, you'll see each redundant member listed on successive rows with the design information for each joint. The report only includes the force which produces the highest percent usage at each end of the member, even though the redundant may have been checked for forces from multiple members. Now in the summary report, if the compression usage of the redundant member is controlled by the redundant code check, then REDUN will be listed in the usage control column. Now if you run the analysis with the redundants included in the FE analysis, then Tower will also calculate the actual load in the redundants in addition to the load from the percent compression design check. Then, in cases where the actual force in the redundant is larger than the force from the redundant code check, you will see COMP listed in the usage control column instead of REDUN. Now, I mentioned earlier in this video that one advantage of including redundants in the model is it provides a more accurate estimate of the tower weight and wind area because you are modeling all of the members and they are all located at the correct positions in the structure. Tower automatically calculates the weight and surface areas of all the members, including the redundants, and this calculation is the same for a structure whether the redundants are included or excluded from the finite element model. So here on the left, I'll display the section load case information for load case number two for the analysis which included the redundance. And then on the right, I'll display the same section of the report for the analysis when the redundants were excluded from the FE analysis. So here we can see in these reports that the face areas, solidity ratios, and the structure section weights are identical between the two analyses. This confirms that even when the redundants were excluded from the finite element analysis, they were still accounted for in the automated wind area and weight calculations in Tower. Now, so I hope this video was helpful in understanding the different options available to work with and design redundant members in the Tower program. For more information about our software, including additional videos and technical notes, please visit our website at www.powerlinesystems.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, or any other information, please send us an email using the addresses on the screen.
Thank you for watching this video and for your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead design.